Good Wednesday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today. It's a privilege and an honor, humbled to be able to share God's word with you all today on social media, whatever platform you see this on, on social media. I hope it's a blessing to you all as we always go through, God willing, every day, one chapter at a time through the Bible. And today we go through the thought for the day, Genesis chapter 8. And in Genesis chapter 8, as I was going through this chapter of the Bible, we see in the beginning, right away in verse 1, and at the end, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, that God is in control of the weather. We see the flood has occurred in the days of Noah. God sends a wind, and the waters recede. And there's so many verses in the Bible to show us that God is in control of the weather. Psalm 148, verse 8. Uh, Job chapter 37, verse 9. Uh, you have Nahum, minor prophet, chapter 1, verse 3. Jonah, chapter 1, verse 4. If you have time, you could look at some of those scripture verses. It basically shows and proves that it is God who is in control of the weather. In the New Testament, oftentimes we see that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had control over the storms and the winds of his time in Mark chapter 4 verse 39 where he would just say be still and everything would stay still. Today sadly my friends many people here in America and I guess around the world are worshiping the creation instead of the creator fulfilling what Romans chapter 1 verse 25 says. Uh, they say that they're in control of the weather. They know what's going to happen. Uh, making predictions. I remember in 2008, former Vice President Al Gore, who was Vice President under Bill Clinton in the 1990s, uh, turned from a politician into a meteorologist and all of a sudden knew that the world was going to end in 2015, uh, some, some seven years later with a flood. Well, some nine years later, I'm out here in a wooded area. Yes, we've been getting a lot of rain where I live, but I, I am still walking on dry ground. Another politician of the modern day, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She goes by the nickname AOC. Um, she has been saying that if we don't listen to her and her advocates, the earth will be destroyed in 10 more years. My friends, please do not listen to these people. I don't know when politicians became meteorologists i don't know when politicians became ultimately god and knew when the end of time will come the world is not going to get better this physical world it is under travail and groaning under sin because of man romans chapter 8 verses 20 to 22 is very clear about that uh, the earth will not be destroyed by water again god has promised us that but it will be destroyed by a fire as we read in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. And then ultimately everything will be made new and we will be going to a place called heaven. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4 reminds us where there'll be no more residue of sin, no more effects of sin, and there'll be no more weeping and crying. Everything will be made perfect then and only then in God's time. Well, you need to be reminded of this, my friends, that the earth is polluted. The rain that we're getting is toxic because man has been uh, for many years now shooting up missiles and, and other satellites into the sky. And it has been punching holes into something called the ozone layer. It is a layer that God created and put in place to protect us from the rays of the sun. And because of man's uh, folly and sin and rebellion against God trying to be like God uh, like Noah I mean like uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 they wanted to be like God nothing's new under the sun we are destroying the earth slowly people go out and get organic foods they get spring water not realizing what they're getting is in plastics and, and other uh, material to cover it to keep it preserved and we're just slowly being poisoned, unfortunately, here on this earth. I do believe we should be as good stewards as we can with our bodies. But my friends, we need to be reminded 
that our days are numbered by God, no matter what we take or do. Job chapter 14, verse 5 reminds us of that. God's in control not only when we're going to die, but how we're going to die. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 2 and 3 reminds us of that. And ultimately, we, we die sick and get died because of sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 reminds us of that. You see, what I'm trying to say is, my friends, is that God is in control of the weather. God's in control of this earth. Noah learned this as he was in the ark for many months and had to endure, I'm sure, a lot of anxiety and distress in his own time. But he had faith in God. He was obedient to God and his word, and God blessed him. My friends today, I encourage you today, follow God's word. Do not become an idol maker. John Calvin was born in 1509. He died in 1564, and he often would say that the heart of man is an idol factory. We can make an idol out of anything. Today, many politicians and the people that followed them are making an idol out of the earth. Yes, we should be good stewards of the earth, but do you see what's going on? As much as people try to say they're gonna save the earth, it's just getting worse. Why? Because God's words tells us this. As I said before, it's under the travail of sin because of the rebellion of man. And there's no advocate, no groups out there that are going to make it any better. I don't want to sound dismal, my friends, or pessimistic. Our faith and hope is in the Lord. As I said before, Jesus Christ stilled the storms. Whatever storms you're going through in your life right now, even though the earth might be suffering and we are suffering because of sin, Christ can say, be still. And the storms of your life can be still, my friends. They're not going to go away. They're going to come back. You often hear me say this, and I remember a pastor said this many years ago and it stayed in my head. You're in three stages of your life. You're either going into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're just coming out of a storm in your life. That's life. But my friends, remember, denial is not, delays, I should say, are not denials. Robert Hawker said that. He was born in 1753, died in 1827. He was an old-time preacher. And he'd often remind the people of his time that delays are not denials. God is strengthening your faith. God is strengthening your hope and giving you patience as you go through difficult situations in your life. My friends, just remember, God is in control. Father knows best. I remember there was a show years ago on TV, Father Knows Best, our father, our daddy, Abba Father in heaven knows what's best. He's in control of the weather. He's in control of what's going to happen on this earth. He's in control of the storms that are going on in your life. Place your trust and hope in him. Do not put your trust in people. The middle verse in the Bible, Psalm 118 verse 8, it says, It is better to put your trust in God than your confidence in man. There's much pollution in the world. As you see, I'm out here in this wooded area and there's motorcycles going by on this uh, street about 150 yards from where I am, making so much noise, putting out emissions and smoke. Uh, I remember when I was younger, we would use hairspray and blow dryers. And we didn't know how toxic all these things are, but we're learning more and more. But my friends, even though we live in a fallen world, we, live, we follow a living savior. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Father, forgive me, forgive us. When we put too much trust in people, listening to too many people on the uh, internet or on TV, lower the volume, Lord God, in our, head, in our heads and help us to raise the volume of your word, listening to you more and more and less to the things of this world. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all.